Hey guys, I'm Avesh. This is the 13th video of .NET MAUI with Syncfusion control series. Let's quickly review our previous session before we get started. In the previous session, we focused on column types and looked at combo box and text column for gender and other properties of data grid. Using our CDN, we added the employee image and we have also explored the default options for column sizing and generated our own custom column sizing to increase the width of one of the employee columns. We also understood how to freeze the panes and then grouped employee details by gender column. I recommend you to review the previous session before proceeding. In this session, we will focus on the rest of the data grid control features. We'll learn how to sort columns in the data grid and we'll also examine row and column styling and conditional styling. And then we will concentrate on data editing and bind real-time updates before exporting the data using the data grid component. Let's now switch to the coding session and get going. From a couple of sessions, we have been using the employee data to apply different features of the Syncfusion data grid. The Syncfusion data grid provides the built-in support to sort one or more columns by using the sorting mode property. Let me switch back to the code and enable the sorting mode by turning it into a single sorting mode. I'll explain you about the multiple sorting mode in a while. Now the moment I make this to a single sorting mode and switch back to the Android device manager, I have a visual indicator of sort icon which is either ascending or descending for the name which means the moment I apply the sorting mode as single, we can sort any of these columns in the data grid. Now I can sort on experience years as well. I can switch to gender sorting. Of course, we need to disable the sorting on is active. Let me sort over phone as well and let me sort on country. So by default, it is inbuilt to sort each and every columns of the data grid, which is a fantastic feature of the Syncfusion data grid control. Now, let's say we want to sort the name by default in descending order. The moment we start this employee grid page, we want to see sorting over the name in a descending order. In order to achieve that, we need to switch back to the code and add sort column descriptor. So let me add the sort column descriptor over here, a subdata grid dot sort column descriptors. Let me create data grid dot sort column description. We will be choosing the column name as name and then the sort direction would be descending. That's it. Let me restart this application again and view the output. Notice that the name column is sorted by default in descending order. Once the name is sorted, you can click on any of the columns. You can see that experience is also sorted as well as rest of the columns. In the beginning of the application, the name column is sorted in descending direction. Let's now explore the multiple column sorting. Setting the more from single to multiple enables to sort more than one column at a time. So let me set it to multiple over here and switch back to the Android device manager. Let's say I sort it by name and then I click on experience years. Now let me sort by descending on name and let me choose experience year. You could visually distinguish that once the name is sorted, then the experience years is coming into picture. That means the first column will be the sort column and consequently next columns are applied for sorting in the multiple direction. In addition to the single and multiple, Syncfusion support a property called tri-state sorting. In tri-state sorting, when the property is set to tri-state sorting to true, it first sorts by ascending, descending, and it clears off the sorting on the third click. Let me demonstrate that to you. So let's say, allow tri-state sorting as true. By default, it is false. So let me switch back to the device manager and start playing with it. Notice that the sorting is gone. The indicator is gone. Now when I click again, the sorting appears, the descending is appearing and the moment I click on this, the sorting is gone. So it is arranged by default the way the rows are created. Once this is done, along with the tie stay sorting, we can also add another property called show sort numbers. So let me create that to true. So let me switch back. Now let's say this show sort numbers is useful when we enable the multiple as the sorting mode. Now let me click on the name. Notice that this is the third column. So let me restart the application to show you in an effective way. Now we have the name as the first column. The moment I click on experience years, notice that the name has become number one and experience years has become number two. And then when I click on gender, 
it is sorted by gender starting from name experience years and then the gender this is in sequence hence it is showing you as one two and three let me click on name again notice that the name sorting is gone and now experience years has become the first column for sorting hence all the employees are arranged based on the sorting order of experience years and then the gender now let me switch back again and change this to the name column now let's say we have a requirement to change the sort icon sync fusion data grid can be customized to change the sort icon template as well let's see how we can achieve that in order to do that we need to create a sort icon template as a helper class so let me right click and add a new item create a class and name it as sort item template dot cs i mean sort icon template so let me inherit the data template selector properties for this let me make this class as public and create properties related to the data template which are ascending and descending data templates once they are created we need to inherit the method and override the method called on select template so let me create that method protected override on select template in this process we will fetch the sort column description first if the sort column description is null we will return null otherwise if sort column description is ascending we will return the ascending template otherwise we will return the descending template this is a pretty simple code for sort icon template now let's switch back to the employee grid.xaml and create a resource for sorting based on an icon we already have content page dot resources over here let's me bind this into a dictionary called resource dictionary and move this resource under the dictionary so let me move this to the dictionary and then start off over here called with a data template now this data template will be the indicator for descending and ascending sorting so how do we define it data template x key is equal to descending which means whenever there is a descending sort happening it switches the template over here so we need to define the key and under the key let me create an image which will be the sort icon indicator under the image let's have an image source and bind the image source with URI image source. Now this URI image source is coming from our media library. Remember, we are pushing all the images to our image kit media library, which is our CDN. Now I have already uploaded the sort ascending and sort descending images to this media library. Now once I upload these things, I can bind that image source over here by giving the image source path, which is nothing but our URI path. So let me define the URI path here and close this image source. Similarly, let me create another data template for ascending. So I'll create another template with a key called ascending and then assign the URI path as sort ascending. Here we have sort descending and then we are going to add sort ascending image that's it we now have the data templates to sort the columns with the specific images now let's switch back to the android device manager and verify this let's restart the application and observe the output notice that we still have the default sort image provided by sync fusion data grid now it's not changed yet let's inspect what has happened over here we have a sort icon template which we have defined and we have also added the resource over here but we have done one mistake we didn't bind the resource that we have defined into the Syncfusion data grid under the sort column descriptions let's add the sort icon template as well like Syncfusion data grid dot sort icon template close it and let's bind it from the resource we will say resource colon sort icon template and we will also assign the ascending template as static resource which is coming from our top resources and hence we will close this as well then we will create descending template and bind the descending template with the static resource static resource of descending that's all it is now let's restart the application and observe the output again notice that our custom icon is visible next to the column header let me sort it again we have both ascending and descending icons showing up on the column headers with this we have successfully understood the sorting feature on the sync fusion data grid let's now switch to the next feature styling is another important feature of data grid to render appealing aesthetics 
Sync Fusion provides implicit, explicit styling and conditional styling for the end users. Let's inspect each one of them. In the current data grid, we already have the grid data grid style. Now let's change this data grid style to make it more appealing. Let me replace whatever styles we have got with my custom styles from my other window. Now let me save this application. I have added a header row background, header row font family, font size, text color as white. That's because we have the header row background as a dark color. I have also added the row background to reflect all the employee details. Now let's restart this application and take a look at the output. Notice that the simple implicit styling has produced a great aesthetics for the employee grid control. Let's now switch back to the code and try explicit styling. Let me comment the default style here. Switch to the resources that we have defined earlier for the data grid data template. Now under the resource dictionary, let's create a explicit style and we will target the style only for sync fusion data grid cell. Within the data grid cell, we can define the background color for each one of those cells. So let me add a style called a property background and the value is going to be a color. Now let me also add a font attributes to this data grid cell as italic, which means for each and every data grid cells, we are applying a background color and the font attributes as italic. Now let me switch to the device and look at the output. Let me restart this application to apply the explicit style. Notice that each and every data grid cell has got a background color that we have defined. Now we can make it simple instead of each data grid cell. I can also say at each data grid row level, apply an explicit style using this style background property. So let me close this style and move this into the data grid row over here. So each one of these rows will have this background color with font attributes as well. So let me add it back and comment this style, which is the data cell style and only enable the data grid row style with a background color. Now, if I restart this application again, you will notice the similar output. Similar to the data grid cell, we can define the custom style at the grid data grid header cell level as well. How do we do that? We create the style targeting the sync fusion data grid cell. Earlier, we targeted the grid cell and grid row. Similarly, we will target the grid header cell, create the custom styles in here. Let me add few styles from my other window and close this style property as well. Now we have data grid row property and data grid header cell property with the custom styles. Let me switch to the device manager and restart this application as well. Notice that the styles are applied at the header level as well as each and every row level. Other than implicit and explicit styling, conditional styling is another additional feature provided by Syncfusion. The conditional styling can be used if we need to control the behavior with our own custom code. Now let's say we have a requirement to add a background color based on employee gender. This can be easily achieved by using conditional styling. Let me show you how to do that. Let me add a color converter as a class file, new item, and let me create a class file called colorconverter.cs. Now we can inherit a I value converter to send back a custom color. Let me create a class, public class, and let me create a property called object I value converter, which converts based on the input value and parameters. So how do we send it back? Along with this, I need to inherit convert back method and let me throw not implemented exception because I value converter expects to override this convert back method. So in here, let's say where G equal to, let me add value as sync fusion MAUI app dot source dot model dot employee info. Let me cast it to the employee info. Let me retrieve the gender from the employee info object, which is retrieved as value dot gender. So once we have a gender, if G equal to male for all the male employees, I'm returning colors dot light blue. And if otherwise will return colors dot instead of dark blue, let me make it as light pink for all the female employees. Now, once this is saved, we need to refer this in the resource file. So let me switch back to the employee grid dot XAML and scroll to the top over here. Let me refer to this color converter. 
it's pretty simple copy and paste this and say color converter and the key will be converter once the converter is available we just need to refer to this key and add to the static resource let me comment these styles over here again and create another style which actually targets the data grid row isn't it because we are changing the color of the data grid row so let me close this style and in here I will add setter property background and I will say value equal to binding of converter equal to the static resource that we have just now created which is nothing but our converter and then close this setter property that's it now let me restart this application and view the output notice that the employees are segregated with conditional styling sync fusion data grid supports editing at each cell level in order to achieve editing we need to just enable a property at the grid level and we can also disable the editing at each cell level as well by turning off the allow editing property for that particular cell so let me enable the allow edit property to true for this data grid let me restart the application notice that the data grid is enabled for editing I can edit the experience years, I can edit the gender, I can also edit the phone number property. Now let's say if you don't want to allow editing at the phone number level, we can switch back to the code and make the allow editing property for the phone number as false. Let me make this as false and restart this application again. Notice that the phone number cell is just selectable and not editable. In spite of double tap, it is not allowing me to edit as it is disabled at the column level. Sync Fusion Data Grid has the capability to refresh data based on the real time updates. I have seen many examples and many of those are using a simulated approach to demonstrate real time updates and refresh the data to the data grid. However, I want to address this with a real time data rather than using a simulated approach. I would park this feature until the completion of this series. I'll be creating additional tutorials to cover various aspects of .NET MA UI and we will address all of them in those sessions. Let's now just understand theoretically how real-time update works. In a practical scenario, there would be applications that would post the real-time updates to the event bus or the message bus. The application would be the feed API, score API or a stock API which would be called as publishers. These publishers will be posting the real-time data changes to the event bus which would be either RabbitMQ, Kafka, Amazon MQ, or a Google PubSub. The moment the events are published to the event bus, there would be subscribers such as .NET MAUI app which are the front-end applications or it could be sometimes React.js app or an Angular app listening to the events in the event bus. Once they listen to the real-time events, they will grab the events and they will propagate the data to the respective components in their applications. Now in our case, the .NET MAUI app will grab the events from the event bus and it will reflect those events as a refreshed update to the data grid. In the additional tutorial session, I will explain you how to create the publishers, how to create an event bus and then I will show you how to consume those events as the subscribers. Let's now explore the export feature of Sync Fusion Data Grid. Sync Fusion supports exporting the data to Excel and PDF formats. Let me show you how to do that. Let me stop this application and we need to add a new package to support that. Right click manage NuGet packages and let's install browse and install Sync Fusion Data Grid exporting package. Let me click on this package. Let me change the package to 2.5 which is my current version of it. Let me install this package. Once this is done, let's switch back to the XAML file and create a button to export it as an Excel. So let me create a button over here. I can just drag and drop this button and wrap it in a frame. Let me name this button as export hyphen PDF. Let me change this to grid to a stack layout for now. Change it as stack layout. Let me come in this grid row definition. To make it simple, I'm converting it into stack layout so that the button is visible and I can export the data grid easily to a PDF format. Let's create an event for this button on clicked event. Clicked equal to new event handler. 
which will be the button clicked event. Let me switch to the solution explorer and go to the C sharp file. Let me start writing the code to export the data to PDF memory stream, new memory stream. Let's add data grid PDF export controller and let's name it as a PDF export equal to new controller. Once we create the controller, let's add the exporting option, which would be a default exporting option. Name it as option equal to new exporting option where PDF document equal to PDF export dot export to PDF and which is nothing but our this dot employee data grid and we'll pass the option. Now we will say PDF document dot save to save the stream. Whatever is generated is nothing but our memory stream. We are saving the memory stream to PDF document. PDF doc dot close. Once that is done, we have to close it safely. And then we need to export the file. Remember, we need to write different code base to export the PDF. Let's say you are in Android, then you have to write a custom code to export it to an Android. If you are in Windows, you export it to the Windows machine. Now, if you're on iOS, you're exporting it and saving the PDF on iOS device. Let me write the code for exporting it to Windows, which is pretty simple. Let's create a partial class called save service under services folder, add new item. I will add services.saveservice.cs file and I'll create a method called save and view. Now, this method is a partial void class so that I can reuse it either in Windows or in iOS or in Android. That is the reason I have created it as a partial class so that we can use it in multiple scenarios. Now let me right click on Windows and add another file called savewindows.cs which means we are saving a file on Windows machine. We need to match the namespaces between these two. So it is syncfusion.services hence I'll retain the same namespace over here and I will use this partial class and write it as save service over here in save windows. So I'll create this as partial class save service and save you over here and write the rest of the code. To save some time, I have already written the code under this save and view method. Let me explain you this. I have created a window handle over here, which is very necessary. And then I have initialized the file save picker and I have defaulted the extension of this file save picker to Excel file. And then I'm taking the suggested name from the input parameter, which is the string input file name. I'm also adding the file type choices as XLX file. Once this is done, I'm initializing the window handle with the save picker so that it saves the file onto the machine, which is achieved by this line number 21 save picker dot pick save file asynchronous. Now, once this is done under Windows, which is under platforms, we need to switch to those to our services, which has got the save and view and then switch back to the employee grid XAML file. In this section, we are going to initialize the save service. And then once the save service is initialized, we need to pass the file name here and pass the type as application PDF. And then we need to pass the stream as a parameter to this save and view file. Now to make it simple, instead of running in the pixel device, I would switch to the Windows machine now. Let me run this application. Notice that the same application is running in Windows. We now have the export PDF option. Let me click on this option. It should prompt us to save this export feature.pdf. Let me choose desktop and save the file. Let me replace it if it is already created. Now let me open the PDF, which is export feature and observe that the entire data is exported to PDF. In the process of exporting to Excel, I've done a one small mistake over here. Let me switch back to the code to the save windows. I've given the default extension as Excel. Due to that, whenever we click on the export option, whenever I click on the export PDF, notice that the suggestion to save as type is given as Excel instead of PDF. So let me go back and correct it again. So instead of dot .xlsx, I will name it as PDF over here, change the same thing here and within the list also. Let me restart the application again. Let me export it to PDF. Notice that we have the save type as PDF. Now exporting to Excel is another task. I'll leave all the to you guys to explore exporting to Excel.
With this, we have successfully explored the sorting, styling, conditional styling, data editing, and exporting features of Syncfusion's data grid control. In the next section, we will focus on under the control of Syncfusion. Till then, thank you for listening and have a great day.